way you down, down. rest right on that. Oh, no, that's recovery mates. We're gonna need to reach up there anyways. Uh, well, Which is a little weird. <laughs> 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 this gets better every time you explain it further. <laughs> This year, for our NASA Student Launch Initiative project, we went with a 3D printed nose cone. This was designed to be printed in two parts, the coupler and the nose cone tip, which we printed on an extra large 3D printer with a build volume of 350 by 350 by 850 millimeters. This printer that you see right here is a modified Voron 2.4, which I've extended from its stock configuration using one meter linear rails to print taller objects such as body tubes, nose cones, and couplers. Together, both the nose cone tip and the coupler took around five days to print and consumed around two rolls of one kilogram PLA filament. The walls on these components were one eighth of an inch thick and we put them through ejection tests to see how well they perform. There we go. So after our ejection test failure, we went back and redesigned the nose cone so that it wouldn't do that. Derek was able to put together a pretty good drawing on why the nose cone failed the ejection test. It pretty much amounted to stress concentrators bad, threaded rods good. For this, we split it up into smaller components and used those threaded rods that everybody uses to keep the bulkheads in place rather than print the bulkhead as part of the coupler. We also changed the wall thickness of the body tube to be quarter inch instead of eighth of an inch and change the material from PLA to ABS as well. Thank <laughs> you. 
We're ready to we're ready to eject him. That's not bad. You have to twist in the nose. This is the other one too. Where the threads happen, there's a slight mismatch. Well, it's not quite concentric, but you just spin it in place, and it doesn't get stuck. Like that's not, that's not considered stuck. Five, four, three, two, one. Actually, not really okay. The ejection charge completely shattered the avionics bulkhead. Or are you gonna count down or? Oh, I didn't press it. What the fuck? I pressed it in and I. What the fuck? Well, well, shit, it didn't come out. The nose cone was not able to deploy completely due to the pressure from the ejection charge escaping through the shattered bulkhead. After fixing this issue, we were able to perform a successful ejection test and packed up our stuff to go launch our rocket at Dragon's Fire. These big motors don't have a disc that goes here. Because the small ones do. Look at look at this little one. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Well, you should put it on the other side. I'll do. <laughs> Where is the sled? Should we turn it on before? Okay, I just wanted to see if it Okay. Uh, Ooh. Are we putting any ballast plates in the nose cone? Nope. Why would Because it's already over. Yeah, it's so it. heavy. <laughs> yeah. It's holding them. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> His tail is resting on the table. Oh. There you go. 8.9 ounces. Make a video. <laughs> oh, this, feels like, this feels like a war time. <laughs> <laughs> We're witnessing something we shouldn't. Ryan, uh, no. Ryan you're not going to be able to get it out. Is that all the space? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Vinyahad just plenty of water. Bro, don't kill the Vinyahad! Like as far as it is it too fast? I think it might wait. Right? No. Right. You can't go in that way. You can't go in this way. Can't go in this way. Can't go in this way. It'd be pretty banger if we got class credit for it, though. It'd be pretty banger if we got class credit for firing and stuff like that. I really hope I didn't fuck up the wiring doing that. <laughs> Uh, okay, so line it up. Line the markings up. Yeah. And then these. Are the ones that aren't. What? What? Wait, Oh, no, that's recovery mates. We're going to need to reach up there anyways. Uh, yeah, I have a ladder. Okay. Three, two, one. It's not anymore. The way charge just ran out.
After successfully deploying the nose gun along with the main chute, we were able to recover the rocket and bring it back for inspection. Well, bulk has hold up. Yeah, it looks like it went pretty well. Okay. Any damage you can see? Uh, not really. Oh, the bombs really muddy. Yeah, they. That's fine. Do I take a picture? Yeah, I take a picture. Nice. And the battery is still like attached to it. The battery is attached and still has capacity. Nice. Peter, the uh, the threads on this part. Uh, Overall, the nose cone stayed intact, albeit a small crack within the threads between the nose cone tip and the coupler. Hey, he's an astronaut now. I need to make him a little astronaut hat. That's so cute. Yep, and it's still recording data. So you're probably wondering why we went through all the trouble to 3D print our nose cone, as it would be so much easier to go out and buy one and use that instead. Well, for this year's NASA student launch competition, we have the challenge of creating a payload that could withstand a drop from 500 feet without the use of parachutes or streamers. For this, we designed a glider to be deployed from the tip of the rocket and carry the payload down into its proper orientation. Ooh, that worked. Dave, Dave, Dave. Deploy. Okay. Oh. Oh. Let's go. After a successful deployment of our payload, it ended up landing in its correct orientation. This was pretty much a coin toss as it tumbled instead of glided. Given that we were one of the few teams actually approved to launch our payload and one of the two to actually deploy it, I'd say our payload performed pretty well this year. This launch would have not been possible without the combined efforts of Carnegie Mellon Rocket Command and I'd like to give a special thanks to a couple of people who made this video possible. First, I'd like to thank our payload lead, Charlie, for doing all the design and CAD work, as without him, I'd have nothing to print on my extra-large 3D printer. I'd like to also thank Josh, Jeffrey John, and Derek for letting me use their footage in this video. And lastly, I'd like to thank our president, Tanner, and our mentor, Dave, for helping us along the way. It's been a great ride, and I hope to join you guys in Huntsville again next year.